Martin Lee, principal at Hassel, joins us here in Hong Kong. They've been involved in this uh, arena for some two decades here in Hong Kong, and even longer than that, I believe, in other parts of Asia, right, Martin? That's correct. Good nice morning. Nice to have you on the show. Thank you very much for joining us today. Lovely to be here. You know, when I think about when I, when I see um, when I see the neat things that Silicon Valley has come up with, you know, like the uh, you know, time out zones or places where you kind of escape, you know, the torrent of the, uh, the pressures of, of work. Like, I, don't, I can only think to myself, I wish I had something like that. Because uh, normally what I do is I take over the guest room. <laughs> and then the guests don't want to come uh, inside. But is the concept of a more ergonomic, a more human-friendly workplace, is this something that's still relatively novel in places like Hong Kong? Um, it's, it's certainly, you're right, it's, it's uh, novel. But more and more, we're seeing organizations being interested in um, activities-based workplace. Mm -hmm. um, and by activities-based workplace, what we mean is the concept for that is the design of space beyond just the workstation, mm -hmm. where there's a whole suite and array of different types of space mm -hmm. where different activities and tasks mm -hmm. can take place. Mm -hmm. Um, and these tasks range not just from uh, work related, they're also social mm -hmm. and um, interactive hubs for people to come together. Right. Um, I, uh, I remember, I don't know if you remember, but it was, it was, it was a long, long time ago, but there was a, a very funny movie uh, that had uh, actors uh, Dabney Coleman and Dolly Parton in it. It was nine to five. Do you remember? Do you, re you recall this at all? My father tells me stories of this movie. <laughs> Your father tells you stories and I saw it. Okay. Basically, you had this factory-like office. It was like a secretarial pool from the 1960s, yes. you know. Everybody lined up looking in one direction. No personal effects on the table. Mm. And then one day, uh, because Dabney Coleman, the, the evil boss, was kidnapped and, you know, he was being held in an undisclosed location, the three conniving secretaries decided to make the workplace friendly, mix things up, bring in plants, allow personal pictures. And at that time, it was quite revolutionary looking. But we've gone age far beyond that, haven't we, and just extending our personal space? Yeah. Those sorts of spaces are de rigueur now in the, the workplace. And as you mentioned before, uh, organizations are interested now in the attraction and retention of the best and brightest talent. Mm -hmm. And that talent coming through um, from, from academia, they're interested in the sort of work spaces that we can provide. Mm -hmm. So it's an imperative that you give the, the activities-based mm -hmm. workspace, or we actually call it free range now, because mm. you're, you're, as opposed to being locked to your desk right. by the phone and the computer, mm. you know, you can, you're, you're um, more mobile and you can move around to these different environments right. um, to collaborate and to interact with colleagues from either from your team or from different departments. You know, a lot of us uh, who, uh, you know, who do, uh, you know, work and live in Asia uh, right now, we look at, uh, you know, places like those Palo Alto, California campuses with a, with a lot of, uh, you know, and covet what they have and look what, on with a lot of, uh, of, of envy. But we try to appease ourselves by saying that, you know, they've got a lot more property, they've got a lot, a lot more green space and green belts to work with in a place like Palo Alto versus, let's say, you know, Pak Fu Lam or something like that, which may or may not be true. But, you know, when we, uh, in, in space challenged Asia, in real estate, you know, price intensive Asia, how realistic are some of these initiatives? Um, they're very realistic, actually. We, um, we do a lot of work with e-commerce companies, and um, we actually did the first Alibaba headquarters in Hangzhou. Mm -hmm. And rather than a skyscraper, that's a ground scraper, which is um, a much more low-level building. Well, and campus feel, right? Exactly, uh -huh. campus. And so all of the departments, the buildings, are circled around an external courtyard. Right. And it is much more campus or Cupertino-esque environment mm -hmm. um, uh, than your, your traditional sort of um, yeah. workspace. Right. I kind of, I kind of expect that of a company like Alibaba. It's a, it's, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a fairly new, young, nimble company. Sure. Um, when it comes to a person, like, somebody like Li Xiaoqi or Li Ka Xing, you know, a traditional you know, a tycoon who was, was really one of the pioneers of uh, bringing you know, Hong Kong industry to the forefront, but somebody's from the, somebody from the, say, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s who still endures today. How receptive are companies like that to, uh, to, to, to these notions? Well, obviously, one size doesn't fit all. So you need to, it's very important that you meet the client and understand what the um, expectations and aspirations are of mm -hmm. that organization. Mm -hmm. But, um, Hassel, we have done uh, uh, the fit out for Deutsche Bank and mm -hmm. more recently for Bank of America mm -hmm. in Hong Kong. And part of the briefing process, as I say, is to find the, um, the interest and the appetite for this sort of workspace. Mm -hmm. Very interesting there. Um, also, the uh, 
uh, officers are pe people are coming more mobile. Yeah, as you as you rightly said, you know the, the days of tethering somebody and keeping. Them, although I see it far too often for, you know, for comfort. You know, a lot of people kind of staring at their monitor all day long. Hence, getting my, you know my, my, uh, bad cases of myopia or astigmatism. Um, certain companies have tried mobile working or working for ho working from home. Remember famously before Marissa Meyer uh, went in to try to fix Google, mm -hmm. one of the first things she did was tell everybody, okay, you have to actually come to the office. You know, this idea of working from home and never seeing your Monday through Friday or Saturday doesn't work anymore. Um, have we come full circle on that one or are we still working with that? I remember the government here tried 15, 20 years ago to sell the idea of staggered working hours, mm -hmm. but they never really worked because you, the people that come in at 6.30 can't do the same things as people who come in at 8.30 or 9.30. Again, it depends on the organisation. I mean, many um, individuals now are, are um, working across time zones and taking phone calls in their pyjamas at 6 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> um, and then later in the day, they're going to the gym. So there's a, sort of, there's a merging of, of, of life and work into... Um, there's a, it's not so much life-work balance. It's right. merging the two uh -huh. together. OK. I uh, really appreciate your time. Uh, and happy holidays to you. Um, if I could ask you to stick around the office an additional 10 minutes and maybe uh, take a few pictures here on your way and uh, we'll have a little chat, right? <laughs> Marvelous. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm, I really need, I really need a, a yoga gym here to, <laughs> to keep stuff up. Mark Nathan Hassel and Squawk will be back with the final segment of our Wednesday show in uh, Lesson 3.